Okay, so we had just finished in the last video. I had shown you making just a simple emoji based on the title of my band book or based on, on that book and the concepts in it. Just like this example, I took a screen grab of it and I put it in my class folder right there. Now I'm going to open this up in a, a digital imaging software, PhotoP, the same one we used for compositing layers in exercise one. I'm going to get more use of it today. I'm going to open from computer. I go to my folder, and I've created a folder for it. And then the first thing I want to do, because this is a raster image, you know, just a screen grab, you can see the pixels, even though it's pretty clean, it's at 72 pixels per inch. I want to probably make it a little bit bigger. Because ultimately, well, I can do that at the end as well. Yeah, so I'll follow the directions of my steps. Eventually, we're going to take these vector tools that we make that we layer over the top of our emoji to recreate it. And what's beautiful about vector tools is they can be scaled and be perfectly clean at any size. So right now in PhotoP, this is incredibly small. If I go to image, image size, it's only, it's not even a thousand by a thousand, thousand pixels. So it's not, not what Google considers a large image. If I look at inches, it's only five by four inches by 140 pixels per inch. Even though it says DPI, what they mean is pixels per inch. So this is not a print quality resolution yet. To be print quality, it would have to be 300 pixels per inch at the physical size we'd want to print it. So that's the problem with just the screen grab. You see that none of these shapes are all that clean. But, we're going to layer our own shapes on top of it that are vector shapes. And those vector shapes will be perfectly clean at any size. So to start with that, we are going to use the shape tool, which I've circled here. And we are going to replace the shape, starting with the most basic shapes just like we made the thing in Emoji Maker from the base up. So the first shape I'm going to do using the shape tool, which is here, if I click and hold, I'll see the different options. If I want to make a circle, I'm going to use the ellipse tool. And then I'm going to hold down shift to lock its proportions so it stays a circle. And as soon as I let go, it will draw the shape for me. And you'll see that it automatically makes a new layer. And that layer is a vector shape within PhotoP. Now, sh vectors have two qualities. They have what's called a fill, and they have what's called a stroke. The stroke is an outline. We are not going to use strokes for this. So I always want that to be an empty X. But you will see a blue stroke, what looks like a blue outline around your shapes. That just means that that's the one that's selected. And as soon as I make a different shape, that blue will switch to the new shape layer. So that's the difference between a vector and raster is we'll give you that blue around it. And you can see that that blue is perfectly clean. All right. So I've got the circle. What else do I need? I need another circle. But let's address the problem. The circle is not the right color. So how can I get the circle the right color? Well, I can go to my background layer. And I can use the eyedrop tool and click on the color. 
that yellow that I want to match, at least for now. And then I can double click on the icon of the shape layer and it will go to a color selector. And that color selector will include within it, I can click anywhere. <laughs> I can sample from something I see on screen. I can try to find the color here using the, the rainbow spectrum and then the value color picker here. Or because I just selected it with my um, eyedropper tool because it's not visible, I can just click it there and that will match. And if I didn't see it there within the recent colors selected, I could also just click it in my foreground color box, which is in the tools. So that's why I did it with the eyedropper first. Then I hit OK, and now you can see that that yellow is the same. Now I need another shape that's really big and round, just like the one. I just made, but it needs to be blue, right? A blue crescent. Now you'll see there isn't any crescent option here, but what I can look for is maybe under custom shape, I'll have some options. The custom shapes are up in your tool options. You'll see a bunch of them. And what we're going to learn is how to modify shapes. So starting with a basic thing like a circle, we could take any of these. It's got a lot of logos built in. All these are vectors that I can play with and modify. That's where a rounded rectangle is. Outlines. There's a moon but the moon is outlined. Otherwise, that would work really well. So I'll show you how I might use that. So I would draw the moon, hold down Shift so it stays circular. Let's change the color of it right away by clicking in there and then clicking on the blue. Then I can hit Edit Free Transform, just like we did with our composite. And the shortcut for that is Control T. And I can stretch it. And rotate it. And see how I can get close. But it's not the same. So custom shapes sometimes can help. They'll help with the teardrop and things. What else can I do? Well, I can actually duplicate the yellow shape just but with Command J and then change that color to the blue. You can change the color even if you're not making it visible at the time. And then I can hit Control T or Edit Transform. And I can right click within it and say Warp. Now Warp is something we're going to use here. And it allows you to bend your shape at certain points, like it's made of chicken wire. All right? So I'll show you that again. Control T right click within it and say warp and i'm going to pick this point and this point like bending chicken wire and then to keep it symmetrical i'm going to line up the squares so i do exactly the same thing on each side and then i can take these ones Nope, I don't want to move those. Let's see. Oop. Control T, warp. Maybe I'll move it up. Mm. 
come to about here. Move this one up to the same place. Then move it down about that much and move this one down about that much. Okay, good. Now I can take these points and move them out. It's hard turning a circle into a crescent. Let's see. This is what you're going to experiment with and what we're going to find. Let's just move it right to there. It's easy and controllable. And I can take this. Move it up to there. Then take these. Nope, that was pretty good. Let's see. Well, I can hit return at any time, and that will solidify the shape. So right now, this is what I have, these two shapes. And that's done by warping a basic shape, right? And then I can warp it again, control T. And now I can, oh, I need to actually right click and warp. Maybe I can bring that middle down a little bit, but I don't want to distort the top. So you're going to learn a lot about manipulating vector shapes here and what's difficult and what's possible. And it's helpful to try to match something that already exists, just so you're really trying to control it, even though you're not going to be able to match it perfectly. Okay, so that's good for now. I'm going to go with that. I might move this shape just down slightly. There we go. Just with one arrow key. Okay, next. What's the next kind of biggest shape? It's probably the hand, but the next simple biggest shape is this teardrop. So I'm going to use the custom shape tool. See if I can find something close to a teardrop. There are hearts. I can turn the hearts upside down. There's this. It's a little GPS marker. Let's change its color. Double click within the icon and then click on the color, and then control T. I can rotate it 180 degrees, right? Line it up. Hit return. So that works pretty well, but it's got a hole in it, right? So let me fill that with a circle. Because vectors that are the exact same color, these are flat graphics, they merge into one visibly. So I've got this so far. Remember, it's like layered cut out pieces of paper. So now I have three cutouts of paper. What else do I want? This hand is going to be what's called a compound shape. So I'll start with an oval. Then you can, I can use the move tool, move it around. 